So we've kind of just given a basic foundation of, of historiography and I've given my own spin on epistemology concerning the nature of knowledge and how that might relate to um, the resurrection of Christ. I'll just deal with a couple of philosophical issues there. Um, it's interesting to note that science does not say anything against or for the supernatural. Science is open, okay? Science is open. Now the argument might go, but yes, uh, but the thing is we can't go back and experiment on a miracle like you can experiment on the material in a scientific lab, uh, lab experiment. But my argument would come back to you and say, well, knowledge is based on, on experience, it's based on testimony, and if we can go to a, uh, a historical situation and find testimony, good testimony there, then we have good, reliable information. I think that's incontrovertible, incontrovertible and I think it's uh, an epistemology that needs to be brought forward today, and I think is much better than what some of the historiography epistemology that historians are using at the present time which is based on probability which they've got from science and is a kind of critical realist epistemology I think my epistemology is a, bit, is a better bet um, and I call all atheists and skeptics out there to challenge me on it and it would be interesting to hear what you have to say um, <coughs> so uh, so the scientific objection that miracles don't happen is not really uh, a viable objection because um, science doesn't take a stance either way, okay? Science is open. If you want me to get deeply philosophical on the issue, um, the classic argument by David Hume uh, that miracles don't happen because um, basically... Um, we, we generally don't see them happen generally, miracles, uh, so it, it's a break with the natural order. And um, Hume is saying basically that's just not part of the natural order, as it were. But um, Hume also talked a lot about scepticism concerning knowledge, which influenced quite a lot concerning um, the philosophy of science in the 1920s. Basically, after the 1920s, physicists and scientists realized that there was, within a contingent act, I've said this before, that we don't know exactly what's happening. So we should be open to the probability or the possibility that our knowledge can be overturned by something. Because in a contingent act, we don't, we don't know everything that's happening. So right at the bottom of the structures of reality, as we get to the quarks, there are things jumping around there that we just can't see and we don't know how it's going to play out fully in the future. So something can always upset our scientific information. Uh, and so therefore, um, there are things within the structures of reality that we can't see that could possibly uh, be brought to for, for us to see and gain new knowledge. Now, the point is, traditionally, miracles have been seen to be breaking the natural law. But who's to say that a miracle is not working within the natural law, but the structures of reality that we cannot see at the present time are really just the events of the supernatural working within the order of nature, but the order of nature at the deeper structures of reality, we cannot see how they function. So we call it a miracle, but actually it's just natural, okay? So there we are. So that's my argument against miracles can't happen. Uh, it depends what you mean by miracle. Uh, but the main thing is to remember that science is not for or against miracles or the supernatural. Science is just there to examine phenomena. Okay, that's all that science is there for. Um, so basically, I'll leave it there. That's kind of like philosophical objections to to the resurrection um, I've dealt with there. And we'll move into some 
uh, specific objections uh, concerning skeptics and the resurrection. Okay.